Has it ever happened to you that you feel so anxious that you shot your emotions with music? Or have you had your mind so busy that you need to distract yourself with music? Because if that's the case, we've experienced that too. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome to Self Mappers. My name is Marian Tawada. And my name is Victoria. And thank you so much for being another week with us. This is our first video in English and we're so excited to be here with all of you. Um, actually, this, this was one of the requests that we got from our English speaking friends. Marian and I usually speak in English when we are surrounded by other friends or other colleagues from work that also speak in English. But we've never speak in English just between the two of us. This yeah. is the first time ever we're going to have a conversation fully in English. <laughs> And this is going to be so weird, the fact that we're recording it, but I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's, it's very exciting because I feel like we've got friends from other parts that have told us, hey, I would love to hear your podcast. But it's in Spanish. But it's in Spanish and it's not useful for us. So first, I wanted to start this conversation by celebrating with you, friend, uh, for this new episode. And to all of you. And to you. all of you. The other day, Marianne and I were discussing after work that sometimes I feel so, so anxious that the only thing I do is listening to music the whole day. Like, I'm working, I'm studying, I'm doing, like, I don't know, I'm cleaning the house. I'm doing simple tasks of my day-to-day -day routine and I can't stop listening to music. And I feel like it's it, it has become a problem for me now Because sometimes I don't want to hear what my mind is telling me or what my mind is thinking because it gets me, it, it makes me feel so anxious. And we've been doing our research, we've been learning a lot about this and we feel that it's something that's pretty common. We have asked other friends as well and they had the same experience as us. Hmm. Yeah, and I think it's because we're... Um so used to overstimulation at least i i've recognized that as one of my primary coping mechanisms like each time i'm very overwhelmed it's kind of like paradoxical because i uh, dig myself under a tons of work that's what i do when i'm overwhelmed even though i know that makes no sense because you're overwhelmed already why are you putting more things on your plane what, what are you keeping yourself so stimulated but that's exactly what i do when i want to avoid feelings or certain thoughts that I just don't want to deal with so I just focus myself on work I go and work do a workout I meet a friend I clean my house but like I do something I just don't stand there you know with whatever and you it is get that bored I'm for yeah. example exactly bored like boredom is one of the most intolerable feelings that I have and I think that's and me too and I feel like that's super common because we are As you said before, we are so used to being overstimulated. We are overstimulated by our social media, by um, literally having this social active life. And even if you are, even if you're an introvert, if, even if you don't like going out and meeting other people, that's completely fine, of course. But you are using your social media platforms all the time and you have also many other ways for you to get overstimulated mm -hmm. um, and it's not just social media it's everything like it's all the work that you actually do all the notifications that you get from work all the notification from, news, from, from uh, friends yeah. family like everything the video games that you're playing that book you're reading this podcast that you're listening to like absolutely everything you it's an, a stimulation and you like i think we really really are an overstimulated generation like us millennials are the first generation to be like this overstimulated and i think we just tolerate worse boredom actually yeah. boredom is the main reason why people go check their instagram like 51 of the times people check their instagram it's out of boredom yeah exclusively <laughs> and even even if you think about this sometimes it happens to me that um let's say i have to I have to go to another part and I have to work, I have to walk. And what happens to me is that it's so hard for me to just walk where I have to go without having my headphones on and without listening to a podcast or music in general. Something about walking without music or without that stimulation in my ears makes me feel anxious. Or the other day, I was walking to meet you in person and I was thinking, 
maybe I should, you know, just take my my headphones off, you know, for the first time, just feel <laughs> for the first for the time. first time in months, <laughs> just listen to the sounds of the street, the people that is walking around me. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's so important for you to also enjoy that part of life because at the end you're just listening to music all the day like just trying to avoid I know exactly what you mean like really I would leave my house without my metro card like I would have to c go walk back home to get my metro card but I would never leave my headphones never 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 never, never, never. for like, me first, it's not an option I know, yeah. I know and the other day yesterday I was I was going actually to visit one of my friends from from work And when I was in the metro, I I realized that I had the my my headphones case, but, but not my, the headphones. But not the headphones. And I was like, do I really have to be in the metro for like 45 <laughs> minutes without music or any type of stimulation? <laughs> and you are and the I don't, Yeah, and I don't want to be that person that's listening to music, you know, out loud in the metro, and everyone is like, why is this <laughs> annoying girl like just playing to music, random music or random don't videos do that. on Instagram? Yeah, it's horrible. But at the same time, I was like, I think that I'm going to be that person today because I don't want to be without, you know, like, and it's so hard. It's it's something that I've really reflected on, particularly this year, because even though I have a very beautiful relationship with music, I love music. It has been a part of my life since Yeah, forever. me too. For me, I'm a since musician. Forever. Like, <laughs> literally, I've been playing the piano for like 17 years. And I feel like for me, The relationship with music has changed me over too, time me so too. much. Me too, me too. And you know, this year, 2023, is the year that I've listened to music most irresponsibly. Yeah, me too. Like, to the point where I've experienced, mm, I don't want to say pain, but it, it has been kind of painful at times. Like, this discomfort in my ears. I've been getting lots of notifications from my iPhone. Like, do lower Here your... The same. Yeah, like, yeah. for me, it's the same. Lower your lower volume. Lower your volume. Immediately. Because you're getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And the, and the sensations that I feel when I, when I got... Like, when I get this notification, it's terrible. Because part of me, it's like, Marianne, really, do lower the volume. This is not okay. It's, you appreciate music so much. You're hearing so much. Take yeah. care of it. We are the generation with more people that has ear damage I know in the history of the planet because of course we have been let's say I got my first iPod when I was I like was 11. I think 11 years old and I've been listening to music since then I, I became an, 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 an addict me too. <laughs> like me too. literally I, I've been listening to music since then and now that I'm an adult for me it's the same as you Marianne I feel like I've been listening to music this year very responsible I remember my cousin that lives with me, she used to tell me all the time, like, hey, Vicky, you've been listening to music the whole day. You need to stop. Like, you need to stop for a second. Not because um, like, not because it bothers me, but because I'm worried for you. Like, you don't have a spare minute for of you silence. to... Of silence. Yeah, just for you to listen to, I don't know, the birds chirping, <laughs> you know, like, whatever. Or just silence. And it's hard for us because... There is a part of yourself that I think it tells you, hey, I don't want to, first, I don't want to maybe, I have so many things to do. I'm so stressed out that I don't want to, you know, like just be remind, remembering all day long, all the things that I have to do. And also I feel like music also makes the experience more, ple more, more pleasant. Of course, music is helpful for your mental health. Like you can channel your emotions through music. We've also experienced that. And we will talk about that at the end of this episode. But focusing on how we've let ourselves, music hurt us because we give music that power. Music is not supposed to hurt us. We're the one hurting ourselves exactly. with music. Um, but I do have to say, it's so easy to do it, right? Like, for example, me this year, it has been a particularly... I'm not going to say bad because this year has been amazing, but it's just been a year of a lot of changes. These moments were cycles and other cycles begin yeah. and it's transitioning and transitioning is weird yeah it's so weird. <laughs> and you want to cope with that through music as well yeah and even not to feel how I feel because it's, it's not funny. just a matter of I don't want to think about it so I'm just gonna listen to this very loud by the way volume is key because you're not gonna get yourself distracted with you know that quiet low music, music exactly that's no, not gonna work you're out gonna listen to very <laughs> very low uh, very very loud music, music to exactly. the point where yes. the music gets louder than yes. your own thoughts mm -hmm. right like but it's not just about that it's also about 
changing your emotions because if I'm, you know, kind of down and I start listening like Daddy Yankee, yeah, or, you know, la gasolina. <laughs> Sumere mato para que mi gata prenda los motores. Sumere mato para que mi gata prenda los motores. Sumere, it, it's impossible. It's impossible. That you, it's impossible that you don't feel happy with that song it's like yeah. not even happy but maybe distracted and that's all. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. more and energetic he, for and, sure and i completely understand what you're saying <laughs> she wants leah hi. wants to be in the in the leah leah got uh teeth surgery today so she feels a bit sad maybe she kinda, needs to listen to some music today <laughs> kind of like having main character yeah. syndrome here like why are you recording a video without yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah. i completely get your point of transitioning and just listening to music to in some way leave your feelings in your own way this year for me at the beginning i was like the first two months i feel like i was a little bit depressed to be honest Um, and this is a space for us to talk about this type of things. I was very scared of my next steps in my professional path and also in my personal, um, in, my, in the personal space as well, because I was, you know, like just very scared of not being successful in my mind. Like success is something that we just... Um, create in each I feel like every every person looks at success in yeah, different yeah, every, ways everybody kind of, kind of like creates an illusion an of expectation exactly, of exactly. how your life needs to look eh. like for you to be successful mm -hmm. yep and I was feeling that I, I was feeling very frustrated and I felt like since I work completely like 100% remote not having that contact with other colleagues with other friends it was like January and February in Spain, it's are like the coldest months of the year. So I was in my house being very, very like, I, I, I didn't want to go out. I was feeling very low in energy. And my coping mechanism was listening to music all the time. And in a part, it was okay because it helped me to open my emotions and kind of like just feel more what I was passing through by then. But nowadays, I can understand that I was using that as a way for me to escape my reality and what was actually happening to me. That time was the time that I started saying, okay, I really need to put my hands on what I'm doing right now, like what, what, what's going on in my mind right now. Stop using so many distractors to actually feel what I'm feeling and go to therapy. And I started going to therapy again. Like my friends and my family was like, you need to start going to therapy because you are, I don't know if I was, it was a combination of anxiety, depression, stress, um, expectations about life and music helped me so much to cope with those things. But at the same time, it started stopping me from realizing what I was actually achieving in my life, you know, because you're so distracted. Music can be so distracting for so many things like Even the good things that are happening to you, you stop like because I would start using I would start using sad music to open my emotions and cry a lot and cry and cry and open myself, But which is good, which is good, which is awesome. It's a way for you to channel your emotions with music, not shut your emotions. But I was using I was overusing it. So I stopped like. I, I stopped paying attention to the good things that were happening to me because I was so focused in just like enhancing the bad emotions and the, not the bad emotions. We cannot like emotions are not bad or are all, all of them are good and you have to feel them. But you, you get me right. Like I was trying to work in my emotions in the what we consider bad feelings through music that I stopped listening to or paying attention to the good things that were happening in my life. Hmm. that's what I thought I think it happened to me wow and it's so good the way you portrayed the like the whole journey and how you realized you were not using it in the best way to me it was um, kind of different I'm a, I'm a clinical psychologist so I work with you know my consultants and I have usually an average of four or five sessions per day and when I'm not doing that I'm also working you know on the administrative aspect of that or on this podcast by editing and planning our content um, but 
I'm usually never in silence. Also because I work in a co-working, so I'm usually talking to people, either my consultants or the people in the co-working or you. But you know, yeah. I work through conversation, right? Like conversation yeah. is key to my work. But then the minute I finish that and I have no one else to talk to, but you know, me in my head, at the beginning of the year, I was like, nope. I don't want to do yeah, that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk to myself today. I, have, I think nope. that I'm gonna. Um, I think listen to this podcast. I've heard this girl for 26 years. You know, yeah. I don't want to hear it today. Block. Yeah. <laughs> but but the problem is that I feel like there's something healthy about maybe sometimes just being okay today. Maybe I don't want to listen to my thoughts, and that's fine. Sure. But doing it every day, yeah, it's yeah. one start getting kind of like a toxic trait. In of my course, opinion. of course. I actually I couldn't agree more because. It is kind of necessary sometimes. Like sometimes it's like your life is a movie and that yeah. movie is at a critical point, you know, or this plot is just having too much. That main character is going through breakup, a lot of hard work, yeah. uh, family problems. And that girl has the right to kind of like pause the film Let's go to distraction land for a yeah. while and I'll come back to that in a couple of hours, you know? Like all this is going to be here four hours from now, right? So why yeah. not go to distraction land for four hours? Yeah. But you've said it correctly. Like the problem is when you be when you make that systematic. Yeah, exactly. And that becomes like your, if I'm not dealing with this, I'm in distraction land. But you never, at a point where you process what is going on because it's not the same living through your life than processing the events of your life like that narrative moment where you sit down and relive in your head even what you lived like you never really get to integrate are like a random they become kind of like random events that lived they lived you but yeah. you didn't live them right? yeah i feel like sometimes when you are listening to music the whole day and when it becomes what you just mentioned a toxic trade in your life that you stop like well you think call music. it a toxic trait not toxic trait let's say yeah. let's say let's say and because you can use or abuse things right everything you can when use you instagram abusing. or you can use abuse you can use instagram or abuse instagram exactly. you can use alcohol or you can use abuse alcohol so i think mm -hmm. it's kind of the same with music you when can you use start it abusing music exactly that's a good way to put it do you think this could lead to this could lead to a way for you to get in autopilot mode? That's a very good question. Because I feel like it, it actually does. It, it makes you feel, for in my case, I don't want to talk about all the experiences because at the end, I don't know about all the people in the <laughs> planet, but also I think in my personal experience, I've, I've experienced being so distracted by music that I just stop feeling in general. Oh, I yeah. just feel like I'm in um yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in, in this circle where I feel an emotion, I start hearing I start listening to music, I get into my things and then I just forget what I started feeling. Yeah yeah yeah. And sometimes we don't stop to feel. Yeah. Actually just listening you describe that gave me like I think a very good mental picture for that. Music is so immersive. Like you can immerse yourself in what you're listening to so much that you kind of get into this trains of thoughts and you jump from train to train so much and so intensely like those trains of thoughts are very vivid like you're living those things so you're thinking either is you thinking about the lyrics or list singing to the lyrics in your head or like focusing on what you're listening but it's so immersive and you're jumping from train to train train of thought of from train of thought that you kind of forget what was the first train in the first place. Yeah. Then you're like, what was I sad about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, sad is, as an example, but anything, right? Like, what was, like, what was going on today? Like, Or, now that you're saying that, music can also enhance your emotions. As I was saying before, I used to use music to enhance my, for example, the feeling of, uh, being sad I would be okay I'm gonna listen to the saddest song on planet earth <laughs> so I can cry myself out I you know, know like I use know. this as an enhancer of my feeling I and know. say I'm gonna I'm gonna you know use this day to cry myself out and I don't care about that I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna enjoy this 
So I think that now we can maybe start entering into the next conversation that is how to use music to, to channel. channel your feelings. I think we've covered enough of how you can hurt yourself but with it. <laughs> And by the way, For all the musicians that might be listening to us, we love music. We are musicians ourselves and we're not I'm against not. using music as a resource. We are, we're not against about even using music to shut your emotions because everyone has done this. And sometimes it's necessary. It's necessary. But, but it's always better to say in the using side yeah. than the abusing side exactly. of everything. Of everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think the very first memories I have of channeling my emotions through music is me being like 10, 11 years old and listening to music on my disc band, <laughs> proud millennial, and <laughs> listening to music and just like picturing I was in a video clip, like that was my video clip, that was my moment. And every song that I picked to do this video clip in my head. I still do that, by the way. I still do that. And I'm I'm, I'm, very not proud, I'm very proud of that, to be honest. I'm not going to change it. <laughs> I'm not going to change it either. I think that's amazing. Uh, but every song that I do that to are songs that I feel very connected to the lyrics. Yeah. And when you're doing that, it's like you're singing those lyrics in your head and you're feeling those lyrics in your head. I use music a lot in, in therapy and I ask people to tell me this, their story through music and I ask them to pick a couple of songs to make a playlist so they can tell me about it. Because it's so narrative. It helps you narrate your own feelings, right? Like feelings are so abstract. They're nothing. You put them into words. But feelings are not words. Feelings are sensations, right? How to describe it. They're so abstract. But then you put them into words and it kind of makes sense. And, it and you put it into melodies. Because at the end, the melody can also... Sometimes, I don't know if it happens to you, but you listen to this very, very sad song. Well, not sad song. It has a sad melody. But then when you read the lyrics, the They're lyrics so are so happy. Like And the other way around. And the other way around. And sometimes you listen to this very happy melody, but the sad, the song, the, the lyrics are saying something like, my best friend died or something <laughs> like that. And you're like, wow, I love this song. I usually love those kind of songs, by yeah. the way. when they're Because it's... It's very... Contradictory. Yeah, and, and it's cool to listen and to be in touch with both things at the same mm -hmm. time. Sometimes putting your feelings into words is difficult. Like you don't really know how to say it sometimes because it's just too abstract. And when you listen to a song and X artist puts it in words that you're like, wow, I would never, I would have never put the, my feelings into those words. Mm -hmm. But that is exactly how I feel. Thank you so much. For putting these into... For putting these into these beautiful words that describe so perfectly what I feel. And that's why I remember being 10, 11 years old, you know, very... A child, not being very able to put my emotions into, into the carpet. Words. Yeah, exactly. And listening to these artists and being like, yeah, that's how I feel. And that's what I would, you know, recreate these video clips in my head and kind of like channel those emotions and that message that this artist was helping me put into words. So yeah. I think that is so, so beneficial about music and also like to connect to others mm -hmm. because it's like, this is how I feel about you. And you send that song and it's beautiful. It's and like there are beautiful so many people that are going to feel identified with the same lyrics and the same melody. For example, when you are not necessarily listening to maybe not related directly to the lyrics, but the music itself, because it also happens for people that listens to classical music. In my case, I was a classical musician. I, would used, I, I used to play the piano every day, and it helped me to channel my emotions through the piano, through the melodies that I was listening to. Because even if you're not hearing a specific lyric, You can also channel that emotion through a melody, a simple melody, as we were discussing before. Sometimes you listen to a very, very sad melody that has a very beautiful lyric, a happy lyric, and you don't relate to the lyric, but you relate to the melody, melody. that's behind that lyric, right? So it's a, it's a good way for you to use it as to channel your emotions and to also open yourself. Mm -hmm. For me... When my grandmother died, it happened that I closed myself a lot because it was a very painful moment and I didn't want to cry. I didn't want I was trying to avoid everything. I was like, you know, uh, life continues. I'm gonna, you know, keep doing my things. 
keep working, keep applying to universities outside Venezuela because I want to, you know, move to another country. And I was very focused. But the only thing that helped me to open my heart again was music. The mm. only thing. And I'm very you. grateful for that because now I can understand. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> now I can understand that music was the tool that helped me to open my heart again and to process those feelings. Because if it, if it wasn't because of music, <laughs> I would be, I, I, I wouldn't have had the chance of I know opening up opening up and grieving actually grieving because mm. sometimes for people it's hard to grieve it's I hard know. to say okay I'm gonna cry because this person is not here anymore but I'm gonna use music to channel my emotions to open myself again and to allow myself to feel <laughs> I know and you know it's funny that you mentioned um, your grandma's passing because I relate to that deeply Like, I remember after my grandma dying that I wanted to cry. Like, you know, this feeling, you feel everything. Like, you feel it in your eyes. You feel the tears It's there like in your eyes. In yeah, your yeah. face. You feel it in your throat. Like, there's this knot in your throat, even like in your stomach. And you feel, you know, kind of shivering even. And you want to cry. But you can't. You can't. Like, you really, really want to cry. But just tears won't come up. And I have this song that it's called Historia de un Sueño from La Oreja de Van Gogh. That song is like my, me and my grandma's song. Oh and my. listening to that song was like pressing the cry button. For me, it <laughs> happened the same when I was, I, I would used to listen to songs that my grandmother and I used to, used to li sing listen to together or listen together. And, you know, like for me, the best way to drain my emotions was when I was driving because you were alone, you're alone in, in your car you have music that's loud of course it has to be it, loud it has to be loud because it helps you to enter into that to get, it, get yourself, get yourself immersed. In, immersed in that feeling of music and then I would just be driving and crying and just allowing me to experience grief through music and I'm very grateful that I had that tool And that I found that tool because everyone has access to music in general. I, 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 well, not everyone, maybe, but it's easy. Most people, it's free. Most people, it's free, exactly. Well, it depends. Free, free. exactly. <laughs> but you, you get me. I would be driving and listening to music and thinking, I miss her so much. And sometimes I don't allow myself to process these emotions. I'm just like, an automatic uh, automatic pilot i'm del i'm like yeah i'm gonna ignore it. everything that's going everything is fine everything is okay and then when i listen to music i'm like hey i haven't stopped in a week to process all the emotions that i'm currently feeling i know and music was the only tool that helped me to to manage that yeah music it's amazing what i was saying of narrating your life events I love music to do that. Listening to the songs that you would listen to at that time of your life. This is why I use it in therapy so yeah. much. Like if we're going to talk about that period, that very complex period of your life that you don't really know how to tell me about, what songs were you listening back then? Yeah. So we can play them and let them evoke the memories and the feelings that you were using because it's it's impressive how the memory works. I feel, <gasps> I feel like these neurons of like, I don't know, I have this neuron of... Justin Bieber's baby song. Literally, it's so and then, crazy. The and then I have this other memory of me walking with my mom in the mall, listening to that, and they're just like tangled together. Like, yeah, this is, yeah, do yeah, it with yeah, me. Like, yeah, that was just an example, right? But the moment you listen to that song, boom, there comes the memory. Definitely. And I don't know if you have realized about this, but anxious people like me, we tend to go to or watch movies or listen to songs that we have listened to so many times that bring us good memories and comfort provide zones. us a, a comfort zone, a um, secure place for us. And in my case, it happens to me that when, for example, Sundays, I don't know why, but the day, Sunday, it makes me feel anxious because I don't know I feel like at the next day is Monday and I have to work again and I'm so stressed <laughs> and I know that I have a bunch of things to do so Sundays 
have never been like a, a good a chill day. Yeah, to a you. chill day for me. It's like I know that I have to prepare mentally for the next day. So what I usually do on Sundays is that I watch my favorite like movie, a very cliche movie that I've 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 watched at least at least 100 times i'm not joking i'm which not one? even joking which I, one which one i know like the princess the, diary i know the transcript and everything like i have many but which one freaky I would friday say princess diary <laughs> freaky friday i know you so much <laughs> i would say i don't know like um let me think yeah i don't know monster sing <laughs> <laughs> all of them are disney movies because it reminds me of my childhood and yeah, good yeah. memories of my and childhood. Are good feel movies like, yeah amazing, exactly yeah. exactly it's like a very good movie that makes me feel comfortable and the same happened to me with music the other day i was on it, it was a sunday and i was with my boyfriend and i played some um yeah some like high school musical songs and some it it cheer and songs and some john mayer which is that that is one of my favorite artists in the world and he would be like this music sounds like teenager music. It sounds like you're having a heartbreak during your high school reunion. And I was like, I know, but it's my comfort zone music. You know, I need to listen to that. So I feel very calm. And it's, it's, it's very interesting how music can also make you feel grounded. Yeah. Like, I'm stable. Nothing is going on. Everything's fine. So you can also use music to channel those emotions to feel grounded, hmm. to feel... I'm safe. Yeah. Even even if it's not the the situation, even if you're not safe, you you can use music to feel safe. I feel like, well, at least I hope most people or everyone have a comfort song, and you know, a motivational song, uh, I want to cry and I cannot cry kind of song, like a song for everything, because you just go there. Like yeah. I need this song. I need to play my comfort song. I need to play my I need to cry song. I need to play my, play my motivational song. Like you need to have it there. Yeah. You need to know that it's there for you. Another thing that I wanted to mention about keeping the songs is the way that they narrate your life. Clearly, I have one that's called Vicky's Oldies and you know that because I always every time like I'm with you I'm like let me play this Vicky's Oldies song and I have Britney Spears and I have you know, like Adele and Justin Bieber. Pretty much that teenage that vibe. That teenage vibe, yeah. yeah. Because it was... I, I, I understand that it's different for every person in the world. <laughs> but in my opinion, being a teenager for me, when I think about being a teenager, I think about being with my family, being in Venezuela, near to my family, to my friends, near to my mom, living with my mom, experiencing that part of your life when someone is taking care of you so when i listen to that music i think about those moments and it brings me good memories hmm. yeah it's it's a great tool to know how to use i would say first tip to use music to channel your emotions would be something like are you consciously consciously listening or is it noise that you want to have <laughs> Because I don't know if that makes sense, but sometimes... It makes total sense. You need to ask yourself first, do I really need the music right now? Do I really need to listen well, to music Well, it could be right want, now? right? Like you don't have to do need I, it. Yeah, do I... But sometimes you feel like I need to listen yeah, to that's right. music because I feel so anxious that I need to listen to music. But do you really need it? Do you really need to listen to music? It's the same as... For example, when you want to go out and have some drinks with your friends, do you really need to go over that next cup glass of wine? Do you really need it? Or is it more like you just want to have it because you want to avoid some things or you just want to be drunk? Be drunk. Do you really need to listen to that song right now? Do you really need to put yourself into shutting your emotions again? Para reflexionar. Para reflexionar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, I see, your I see your point. I guess it's not only a matter of needing it or wanting it, but just know that you're not listening consciously. I, I would say that's the first step. Because, for example, for me, I think I wasn't really aware of that. Like, I was listening to music without being conscious about it. Like, I was just having noise, you know, in my head, like, and cooking and doing whatever, but, like, with noise in my ears. And 
I didn't realize I was doing that until I got scared about my ears and I started asking the questions, like, right, like, how am I listening to music? And I was like, you know, sometimes I'm not really, like, if you would ask, ask me after, what were you listening to? Maybe I would have to go like, uh, because I wasn't And the same attention. happens with the podcast, for example, that someone asks you, what podcast are you listening to? And you're like, I don't even know what they're saying. Like, I, I was just listening to the podcast because I needed to have some voices there to Someone avoid. to be with yeah, me, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like background noise. Yeah, it's horrible because for me that I know, well, now I know it, but I didn't know it before. But now everything makes sense. I know that I have ADHD. And for me, sometimes it's like I have to go back into the song the same song or the same podcast because I wasn't actually paying attention to it. For example, you're doing something that you need attention. Maybe it's not your favorite favorite task and you want to use some background music. The third tip that I would give is listening to music that is actually going to help you because sometimes when it has lyrics or when it has like extra layers of complexity in the music, it can make you lose your attention and in what into what you actually have to focus yeah it can so, get you distracted like exactly. do not try if you're gonna need, like if you needed to study or to relax or to focus like maybe try to avoid music with lyrics exactly listen to classical music maybe yeah. listen to lo-fi music that doesn't have any lyric sometimes i i have read that some people use some waves some al al alpha waves and beta waves that's yeah just in general frequencies and, and if you like that we can actually create a video only talking about how those frequencies can help you with your concentration and focus because it's actually a good way for you to get focused into yeah. what you have to do but having some maybe background noise that it's not necessarily something that's going to make you feel overwhelmed because sometimes music can make you feel a little bit overwhelmed because you have so many things going on because you're overstimulated yeah you're you have you have all that auditory stimulation all that visual simulation all that mental simulation and mm -hmm. feeling simulation it's like it can be overwhelming so yeah. yeah that's a very good tip my other recommendation would be just being very just be aware of your surroundings try to be aware of your surroundings because that's what i've been doing recently it's also a way for you to enjoy life as well because As we were discussing at the beginning of the video, we use music sometimes to distract about what's going on, what's going on in our surroundings. And we need to also enjoy a little bit more when someone is talking on the street, what type of conversation someone is having. Even out of security, like sometimes you're not aware because you're so immersed in the music, like we've been talking so long today and you're maybe you didn't realize someone followed you all the way from the metro mm -hmm. and that person is walking right behind you. You're like an idiot exactly <laughs> lost in music and you just didn't see it. Or, you know, maybe an accident. You are not looking in the street and maybe, you know, you're in the middle of an accident because you're not aware. I think this could be linked to sit with the discomfort of silence because silence and the discomfort of boredom you need to be bored at yeah. some point like we're you did so, it yeah we're we so, did it when yeah. we were kids like think of how many times you, you told your like, mom i'm bored <laughs> and your mom would be like I okay that's not my problem <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. like you just go and play with the grass i don't know and that's my mom something. would say like think of the crabs in mortality <laughs> Like, yeah, la would del yeah, yeah, and I would yeah, be yeah. like, what, what are they talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you think about that, that's also related to creativity. We don't allow ourselves to be bored. And that it's also cutting our of course. way of being creative and doing other things, exploring other things. Explore, I don't know, painting, drawing, playing a new sport, learning a new language. Cooking. Cooking, whatever you want to do, but do it without having so many stimulations around you enjoy the sound of you don't have cooking. to multitask yeah. all the time no <laughs> she you says that and i'm and i'm thinking about myself because i am i am a professional when, multitasker <laughs> i think it's like probably you don't even remember when was the last time you were only doing one, one task thing. yeah i think it's been a long time yeah. you always multitask but i think it's important to train yourself mm -hmm. to be able to focus on just one, one task at the time at, at the time like i think that's key to training and maintaining a good attention and that's a good way to also relate it to music just try to do one thing at a time without listening to music or without even if that is just listening to music like remember when was the last time you did that for example i have many many memories of being alone with my disc man 
at home just mm -hmm. listening to the music but now that is rare, less common i still do it but not as much yeah usually i listen to music while I'll do something else when you're using um, music consciously after you know you've asked yourself of all these questions you can be like you know what i'm gonna listen to this album or you know to this playlist whatever and i'm and gonna I'm close my eyes yeah and i'm just gonna do that when was the last time that you actually did that it's it's been a while And now that you're saying that, I love that tip because now I'm gonna, I'm do, gonna it. do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I love it. That's I been, love it. that's something that I've been doing this past year, like this past month since, you know, this journey that I've experienced with the way I've been listening to music. And it's been amazing. Like it, I couldn't even remember when was the last time I did that. Just being laying on my bed with, you know, the headphones on and just listening to music, not while being on my phone, not while being anywhere or doing anything just listening to music even when you do that and you close your eyes you can actually understand the different layers of music oh, you know that's amazing. that's amazing when you can listen to you know All the drums the, different, yeah. the voices the bass it looks it, it sounds so beautiful and you understand the complexity of the song as well because when you do it when you're doing other tasks you actually don't pay attention to all the layers that that music producer <laughs> put, put himself into you know like producing and working out and now when you're actually paying attention you enjoy music even more. more i think we should give some obvious tips for example they were very obvious but i was not paying attention to that up until this year do take care of your ears do not listen to music so loud in your headphones all the time don't be me like this year i was very irresponsible about that and you know i haven't checked my ears i haven't been to the doctor i kind of been avoiding that but i will i promise i will i promise i'm promising that the next myself. video is about my doctor's doctor's appointment. yeah exactly <laughs> i want to i want to hear that bitch. you know like she's like i haven't been responsible but let me let me give you some tips about what let you're gonna do okay <laughs> let me pretend i'm better than everyone exactly, exactly. and <laughs> Yeah, um, but, but definitely, like, do be mindful about that because, um, well, if you want to be an old person that listens and can enjoy music and has a good hearing, then you got to take care of it mm -hmm. now, not tomorrow, not when you're old, now. Like, this has this is something that has to change now. And, well, I, I haven't been to the doctor yet, but I have made radical changes to the way i listen to music i'm avoiding headphones as much as i can and i'm being mindful about the noise and i've i've been feeling different good. so yeah that's good. good to hear i know i'm happy to <laughs> i'm happy to hear that and in my case what i've done and what i've changed recently is trying to i ask myself do i really need to listen to music right now or am i trying to avoid what i need to do For example, when I have to edit videos for the podcast, it happens to me that I want to hear to music or I want to have a background movie because I don't want to do what I have to do. I really need to focus on premiere or any, you know, like edit. Um, Girl, that's literally impossible. How can you watch a movie and edit? A that's literally impossible. I know it's impossible, but I do it. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it so many times and it's horrible. But now I realize that that's not healthy i need to focus and i need to pay attention to what i'm doing i yeah. cannot do this while i'm listening or having other type of stimulations because at the end i'm already being stimulated by using a edit uh, an edit program yeah exactly i love this conversation me I too loved having this conversation with you first episode in english yeah! <laughs> and i hope you enjoy it as much as we did and if you haven't followed out follow us in our youtube channel i don't know what you're waiting but You go and subscribe. Yeah, and to all our Latino friends, escuchen este episodio con subtítulos en YouTube. Por favor, queremos que no sea un problema la barrera del idioma y al contrario que los, este idioma de inglés solo nos haga conectar con más y más humanos expansivos acá en Soft Mappers. Así que no se pierdan los episodios en inglés tampoco. So just translated what she just said. We just want to <laughs> have a bigger community here we're so happy to have you all here if there's any way that you would like us to keep growing keep expanding keep creating more content that's related to music or other type of topics because this is a very i would say broad podcast um we're more than ears to listen to your recommendations and thank you so much for being one week more here with us at self mappers thank you so much bye 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 bye, bye.